riding superstars. So I am in my tack room because I've just finished riding Mowgli. Today was a bit of a different day. I didn't expect to video today, but he did some amazing things with the connection that I really, really wanted to show you guys. So I got um, uh, Ash to run out and with the camera and the microphone and everything and get it done because he was just super. But the reason why I was so keen, I'm gonna take my boots off while I do this. <laughs> the reason why I was so keen to show you this week is because last week he was ducking behind the contact all the time. This week, he's actually taking the contact, but sometimes in a really mm, ugly sort of way. So rather than him going, you know, on, um, on the bit, behind the bit, on the bit, behind the bit, on the bit, behind the bit, this day, well today, he was going on the bit, above the bit, on the bit, above the bit. But when he was going above the bit, he was really against the bridle, pulling the bridle forward. So it feels really ugly and it feels um, really uncomfortable, but actually it's really great because when they're in the contact, you can then actually do something with it. So I do like little mini figure of eights in the round yard. You'll see the trot really pick up. I'm able to really ride him versus just sort of sit there and a little bit hope for the best. It's really, really cool the way I've, I've, he's been able to do that for you this week. And I, I didn't want to miss out on it because it's only Saturday today and I didn't want to miss out on filming it for you. So it's a little bit raw this guys because it wasn't planned at all. But I didn't want to miss out on it because I know that he learned so quick. By the time I did my filming on Tuesday like I normally do, this bit would have been gone. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy it. I hope that you can see that, you know, as you go along, it's not always pretty. As you go along, it's not always perfect, but that's actually a good thing. It, um, the, those, those ups and downs along the way is what gets you there so quickly. And then because he's going so fast, so quick, I can start to do things like hack him soon and stuff like that, which I'm really excited about as well. So it'll cut over to the round yard now. You'll see where we're at. Um, and again, excuse me this week for it being a little bit warts and all. We've cut and, cut and pasted it all a bit together because um, I just didn't want you to miss out on this moment. And I know three more days and <laughs> he won't be there anymore. Hope you enjoy it, guys. Okay guys, so I wasn't actually planning on filming today, but I said to Ash, quick, go get the camera because I really want to show you guys this. Okay guys, so as I said to you before, this was a bit impromptu because he was just doing some really cool stuff and I'm like, Ash, come out here and film it. And I really enjoy the voiceover because I think that I can see everything that you can see and then describe what's happening. So as you can see here, he looks more even maybe angry. He's twisting his jaw onto the bridle and he's going up in that giraffe manner a lot more often than the previous videos. But this is actually an amazing thing because what it means is that he's actually taking contact. So even though it feels quite negative and it, feel, it feels actually quite strong in moments, it means that he's taking contact. And because he's taking contact, that is the next step. And then we just have to make it soft. So you see the principles are the same, but because he is taking contact, I'm able to leg yield him more on the wall or baby leg yields need, rather than needing to turn often. And then when he does take the bridle, he's not dropping his head as low. So you can see all those little corrections I'm able to do a little bit more as I go. I'm so proud of you. Look here. See, he's there he drops a little bit, but then he comes back up, drops a little bit, but then comes back up. So it's nowhere near what he was doing last time. I'm so, so excited for him. I've managed to put my stirrups at a more simple length. And because he started this a little bit the day before, a little bit yesterday, I was able to actually start to drive him a little bit more because the door is open, so to speak. So he's a bit more supple. So now I have some spurs on and I use a really soft rowel spur, which is not totally blunt that rolls around so that when he ignores your leg a little bit and in the right moment, you can give him a little tickle with it and it gets him to go forward into the open door. And when I talk about the open door, I'm talking about the moment when he's supple, the moment when he's connected, he's taking the bridle, and then I can say, right little Mogues, go for a little bit of bit more. Just look at him, I'm so proud of him. So you can see the trot's looking more athletic. 
he's really going and I know he's sweating a lot guys he hasn't been worked to the ground it's just really really hot and sweaty today um, and you'll even see in a minute um, I was watching it back and these flies are everywhere so the sweat and the um, the tail swishing etc is not heaps of work it's just very hot ah look at this so there's a little leg yield again just there and again, I keep my reins nice and short. And when he goes up, he's going up against the bridle rather than so much behind the bridle. So his pole's more up, his nose is more out. And I'm really, really happy with this. In a moment, because he's doing so well, I can start to work even more on the suppling exercises. So I actually do some really steep figure of eights within the circle where I really use the leg yield to push the quarters out at the same time. And you can see the more I go round and round and round, the more I'm able to keep my hands normal, the more it looks like my riding is the riding that you normally see, that riding you normally see me riding on my own horses. So I've turned there, just and that, you can see the leg yield, you can see actually the hind legs cross on the circle. That's just because it's a moment when I put my leg on, the brick wall came back up, that brick wall of block, of, of lack of suppleness. So I just go back to my basic again. So it just shows that it's okay to keep going back to your basic. It's okay to go, oh, I've got it right this second, but then 30 seconds later, I don't have it. Go back to where I was a couple of days ago and then change again. But again, you can see there's flies. The flies are so annoying for him today and he just did so well to keep going. But I'm able to really maneuver him. Yeah, good work. Sorry, I get so excited and do it within the movement. So when he puts his head up, I'm allowed to push you, I'm able to push his shoulders over a little bit, push his quarters over a little bit. I don't have to do so many turns. Here's where I do that really steep zigzaggy or, or snake-like serpentine, or ser oh, kind of is, it sort of looks like a serpentine within a circle. And the reason for it is I really wanna whoosh his quarters out and and really use the leg yield within those within those um, changes of direction. And because he's letting me in so much, I'm actually able to do that. And look at this trot, look how much it's improving. And now he might drop behind that vertical for a moment, but then he goes back up into the correct place very, very, very quickly. Here again, he's starting to block in that door so that um, that brick wall is coming up again. So that's where I'd leg yield him a little bit with his quarters to the wall. But because he reacts so quickly, I don't actually need to turn the circle. And look at him, he's just doing super. These ins and outs are a little bit flies, a little bit lack of connection, a little bit tired, he doesn't want to go. But he also does need to increase his fitness now and do that, you know, 20, 25 minutes worth of work. Yeah, super. And there again, I've changed the rein. You see, as I go around, I really push those quarters out. It might seem like a really steep line to be doing or a really exaggerated change of the rein. But what it does is the exaggeratedness of it or the nature of that steep turn, that encourages him to keep moving, but also um, sweep those quarters out. And the more we change direction, the more even he's going to get in his way of going, which is, you know, super exciting. And you can see I look more normal. I'm more straight. I'm able to use my legs in a more appropriate way. You can see there I shorten my reins there again a little bit because he's quite strong in that moment and I want to keep my connection positive. So if you feel like you're having a bit of a tug of war with them, you need to shorten your reins so that your arms can be a bit more forward. And if you be forward in, in a positive way with your hands, then they're more likely to as well. And then again, so nice, really do lots and lots and lots of changing of the direction. You can see here, so really push his quarters out. Yeah, you push them out, I push them out. And you can actually see his hind legs crossing. In that moment, that's the bit of leg yield. And what it's really doing is opening him up. And you'll see now that as we progress along, it'll start to look a little messy again, like it did in um, last week's video so he goes a bit deeper behind the vertical etc etc because now I put him into the next level so I'm challenging him again so there he goes back to his normal things he goes back to what he wants to do which is sit behind the vertical so now that I'm doing these changes of directions and I'm challenging him in a new way he's going to go back to his old stuff 
And you see what I'm really doing there, sweeping those quarters out. Sometimes when I turn him, he really doesn't want to turn. So I really have to hang off the side and really use my body weight to help him. Notice there, the, he, I couldn't turn him and the block was in the way, I never abort mission, I just keep going. That's why I have that block, because it doesn't matter if he runs into it accidentally, he's not gonna hurt himself. And you can see they have self-preservation, they get around. But if you get a little bit worried and think, oh gosh, I'm gonna stop now because I'm not gonna make it, then you've just taught them, well, they don't have to make it. Again, you saw the first serpentine part of that was really beautiful and supple. And then the second turn was like a boat. It was like a, a surfboard boat. That's why we do this. So that he, he get, has to increase his suppleness almost straight away in the turns not just not be able to go around and around and around and slowly increase it. So it gets him to be a little bit more submissive straight away. And look at how much more forward, that, not right there, not bad, bad time to say it, but you watch in a moment how much more forward and through the trot he's getting. That was a super one because of this suppling exercise I'm doing. Look at that trot. Isn't that awesome? And again, he's doing a little bit more head bobby now than he was originally, not for any other reason, other than now he's a little bit more tired and also we're doing something different. So he still pulls out those, those old tricks. That was his stiff turn and that was a million times better than the turn before. The turn before he was almost dead straight counted. That time he actually bent a little bit. So then you see I'm able to do it again and I push those quarters out. And every time I do it, you can see that hind leg like closer to the front leg and the front end get more stable. And again, I just want to reiterate, guys, he hasn't been working really, really hard. It, I think 13 minutes or so he does this for and then he has a walk. It's not very long. It's just that it's very, very, very hot today. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm finishing up for the day and I'm letting my reins go. Now, how do we know how to measure contact? We know that if we let our reins go, he should take that bridle forward, okay? So in this warm down now, I actually let the reins go, then I pick him up again and get him going again, and then I let them go again. And it's a real test for me to know, there I go, let them go again, to know that he is connected and he is using his back because he's taking that contact forward. Okay guys, so the audio is actually just about to come back. Um, it starts to actually work again now. So I'm going to let that go over to the audio and you can hear what's going on. You can see guys, he's sweating. He's working hard now, okay? So the next part of this is to also try and give him some happy time, some hacking time. And I'm gonna show you a safe way of doing that as well. I'm just gonna keep walking him so he stays nice and free. But you see now, guys, he can really work. Now he can really get there, which is just so exciting. And as I said, today is, what day is it today, Ash? Saturday. Today is Saturday. I wasn't planning on doing a video until Tuesday. But because he was in this moment, he learned so quickly, I didn't think that you guys were gonna see it. So that's why I got in and Ash had come out to come running <laughs> and do the video because it's so good for you guys to see that contact doesn't always look pretty. And you mustn't get confused by that. When he's in that bad moment of the contact, it's horrible. He's against you, you feel his, his little uh, uh, bit twisting. You can, you can feel it's not nice, yeah? But you maneuver his body, he's more stable, he lets go. And then the contact is solid, but not heavy and I have the ability to test it now. I can let go of my rein and I can see that he takes it. So if you don't know what I'm talking about there, guys, you need to look at the training scale video, okay? Um, training scale video number one, that talks all about that. And letting a reins go tests the connection. It's such an amazing way to do it. All right, so I'm so excited you got to see that. The, um, on Friday, I'm gonna talk a little bit about hacking this little guy because that's his next step. He needs to be able to be ridden out a little bit and be calm and be happy to be out so that he also doesn't get sour just going round and round and round. Next week, he's gonna have a little bit in the arena out there in the, in the big indoor. If you wanna zoom over to that. The big indoor just there, <coughs> excuse me. 
the big end orders there. And then he's going to do his can to work probably next week in the round yard still. So that you've still got that control. But what I'd like to do now, flies again. <laughs> What I'd like to do now is to be able to get him off the circle. Because he's able to move around, I can really start to think about that. So I can't wait to show you. <laughs> I can't wait to show you that, guys. And he has just been amazing. So I hope you learned a lot from that. I hope you learned that connection can look ugly for a minute. That's okay, right? Remember also, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Thank you so much for those of you who we had some messages saying, we've been watching for years and we've just subscribed. Thank you. Keep doing it, guys, because the bigger this channel grows, the more little guys like this we can help. And also, as I said, you know, I really want to <laughs> help people more in real life, have people really come out and see me and meet me and get opportunities for me to help you with your horses too. So I can't wait to see you next week. I can't wait to see you actually on Thursday when we hack him. And then the week after that, I really think we're going to be in the arena. It's pretty exciting. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye.